the phone rings. It's Jose, calling from Colombia. Maria, compra más café. He wants me to buy more coffee. I had just won a national cold brew championship in the United States with his coffee. But instead of excited, I was feeling guilty. I had recently discovered that black coffee could be naturally sweet and it could taste great without sugar. I was mind blown because I did not drink coffee. Coffee was bitter, it gave me jitters, and again, the sugar, the calories were just not worth it. So I was so intrigued about naturally sweet coffee that I needed to learn more. I took classes in New York, in Dallas, I visited fincas in Colombia, and I concluded that naturally sweet coffee was such a treasure that it couldn't be a secret. I needed to share it with the world. So I started to roast beans of Colombian coffee in my home garage. And I would share it with my friends, with my family. Of course, I would bring it to the office to share with my colleagues. Until it felt like it was backfiring. Jose had been calling for weeks, asking when I would buy more coffee. I wanted to help him, but all I had was a small operation at home. Jose represents millions of farmers, not just in Colombia, but around the world, that want to live and work with dignity. I was feeling guilty because I was not doing enough to make a difference. Soon after my call with Jose, I quit my job and I came to Stanford to learn how to make a difference. And this is why I am here today. <laughs> the coffee market is massive. It is the second most consumed beverage in the world, only after water. In the past 24 hours, 64% of Americans had at least one cup of coffee. Collectively, in the United States, we're spending $100 billion just in coffee a year. And our generation, millennials and Gen Zs, we're spending $2,000 a year out of our pockets just in coffee. So if coffee is so important to us, why is naturally sweet coffee still a secret? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I ask this question myself every single day. <laughs> what I do know is that if we make naturally sweet coffee the rule rather than the exception, we can change the world. And I'm going to tell you how. The industry calls naturally sweet coffee specialty coffee. So I'm going to switch the terminology. And this is coffee. Coffee is the seed of a fruit, the coffee cherry. And unlike grapes, coffee cherries do not all ripen at the same time. In the majority of the world, coffee is handpicked, but not selectively. So the cherry pickers will pick red cherries, green cherries, overripe cherries, even some rotten cherries make it to the mix. But when cherries are literally handpicked at that peak ripeness, the natural sugars and the taste of the fruit permeate into the bean. So you can actually taste the difference. Well, as long as the coffee is not burnt. Most coffee is burnt on purpose. And that is to mask imperfections from having beans of all kinds of cherries. But we shouldn't have to. In the specialty coffee, the sugars are caramelized just like you caramelize onions. Caramelized onions are sweet. And that's because we're bringing outside the sugars that were already inside. So if taste is not enough to convince you about the benefits of naturally sweet coffee, I will tell you the most exciting part, and is that it can change lives. So why was Jose calling, insisting that I buy more coffee? Jose's income is a function of price and volume. The math is simple. How much coffee can Jose produce, and at what price can he sell it? 
the price is dictated by the international price of coffee because it is a globally traded commodity. That price is often not enough to cover the cost of production. Fortunately for Jose, the specialty coffee movement had provided training for him and some neighbors so that they could produce quality product. And this changed their lives. On the first day of training, Jose's wife and his two daughters painted their nails in red so they could learn the right color to pick the cherries. But this education was just the beginning because specialty coffee's benefits spark from education and lead to more education. With a sustainable salary, Jose was able to send his three kids to school. Anna became an accountant, and she's keeping a tight eye on expenses in the farm. <laughs> Laura, she's a manager for con quality control at an exporter of specialty coffee. And Julian, he became an engineer, and ever since his return to the farm, yields have increased year over year. Every farmer has a different story, but there are three things in common. Access to education, improvements in quality, and gains in productivity. This is why coffee can change lives. So what can you do? It's very simple. Making specialty coffee the rule rather than the exception. So next time you meet a friend for coffee, choose a place that serves specialty coffee. If you're going to buy coffee to drink at home and the bag has a roast date rather than a use by date, that's a great sign. Find out who your local coffee roasters are and support them with their business. So what if every time we have a cup of coffee, it's a delicious cup of specialty coffee? Jose will thank you, your taste buds will thank you, and so will I. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>